On July 12, 2023, Elon Musk announced the creation of XAI. The new company aims at discovering the true nature of the universe through artificial intelligence that will be created, in Musk words, with a focus on safety, truthfulness, and curiosity. In its capabilities, it should surpass the current models such as ChatGPT from OpenAI. At the same time, Musk just recently, on March 22nd, signed an open letter calling for the immediate halt to the training of systems more powerful than ChatGPT4. And before that, he himself has repeatedly spoken out about the dangers of AI appearing in our lives too quickly. Is the billionaire trying to slow down the competitors in the promising field, or are we really on the verge of an emergence of independent and uncontrollable AI posing a real danger to humanity? In Musk's own words, I'd be surprised if a digital superintelligence doesn't emerge within the next five or six years. He believes that the field of regulation and control has not kept pace with the development of AI, which is why he supported a moratorium on the development of superpowered AI systems. But where did the idea even come from? What has so scared the best minds in the field of artificial intelligence, along with Musk, who have signed the demand to suspend research? Every business needs a good team and an established network of business contacts to grow. Expand your opportunities to increase the potential of your business with the new Human Circles AI tool for LinkedIn. There are solutions for everyone. If you're a recruiter, build your talent pool. Enhance your candidate sourcing strategy with the search capabilities of the search extension for LinkedIn. Identify and attract top talent, allowing you to build strong teams that drive organizational success. If you're a job seeker, leverage the capabilities of our extension to find customized job openings that match your unique skill set. Connect directly with hiring managers and decision makers, increasing your visibility and chances of landing your dream job. If you're a salesperson, connect with the qualified potential clients. Utilize the powerful LinkedIn search capabilities. Utilize the powerful LinkedIn search capabilities of our extension to identify and engage with high quality leads. Create personalized messages that resonate with your potential customers, establishing trust and creating lasting customer relationships. Follow the link in the description and utilize the full power of Human Circles AI for LinkedIn to grow your business and make your dreams come true. On March 14th, 2023, the ChatGPT4 artificial intelligence model from OpenAI, Microsoft's AI lab, was released to the public. Users around the world have found many uses for it, from writing program code to student research, and GPT-4's general search and information gathering skills have called into question the employability of many workers and the existence of certain professions. This seems to have particularly frightened journalists. The release of ChatGPT4 made not only pen sharks nervous. Already on March 22nd, a week after the release of the new model of OpenAI, the website of the Future of Life Institute, an organization that describes its mission as driving transformational technology for the benefit of life on Earth, published a letter with this alarming headline. We call on all AI labs to immediately suspend training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4 for at least six months. The letter spread through news channels and social networks like Wildfire and was signed by Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak, and other well-known AI experts. Among the signatories, there were engineers from OpenAI Lab who went against the position of the company's CEO, Sam Altman. Altman, while agreeing with some of the concerns voiced in the letter, did not consider it the best way to discuss them. Although he had previously said that we're a little afraid of ChatGPT ourselves. The letter from an organization modestly named Future of Life referred to an article by Sam Altman published before the release of GPT-4. In it, he raised the issue of the need to plan for the development of AI systems on the path to universal artificial intelligence, AGI. At some point, it may be important to get independent expertise before training future systems and agree to limit the growth rate of computation used to create new models. We agree, the authors of the open letter replied to him, and that time is now. And while Altman confirmed that a month later they are not and have no plans to teach GPT-5 yet, noting that writing as if we already do was a bit silly, he never signed the letter. And the focus of public attention has already shifted to other problems. The discussion of the open letter has quieted down in the public domain, but the story is clearly not over. And this raises many questions. Have there been cases where progress has been slowed to regulate new technologies and avoid dangerous consequences before? And if so, what mechanisms were used to do it? 
Before 2023 and the release of GPT-4, how were the risks of AI development assessed? What measures were taken by corporations and governments? Number three, who is this organization, Future of Life Institute, and why did this letter have such support and wide discussion? What does this have to do with open AI products and what could be Elon Musk's interest? To start unraveling this mess, we're going to go to a place called Asylumar, California. If you look on Google Maps, it's a cozy hotel on a picturesque promontory with a spacious conference room for 150 people. And it was here in 1975 that the principles on which the authors of the letter from the Future of Life organization relied were laid down, calling to slow down the development of new AI models. That year, 150 industry leaders and scientists gathered at Asylumar to discuss the possible dangers of a new rapidly developing technology that could change the world beyond recognition, DNA recombination technology. The outcomes of the conference were general principles for further work and research and development in the field of DNA recombination. Two, banning some types of experimentation and suspending others. Number three, proposals for the government to create regulation in this new field. And number four, a surge of interest in the biotechnology field from the public and private investors. 20 years later, conference organizers Paul Berg and Maxine Singer wrote, the conference ushered in an inimitable era for scientific and public debate of the regulation of science and the guidelines developed allowed scientists to conduct DNA recombination experiments in a way that 20 years later has become the most popular area of biological research. The conference itself, along with the open debate surrounding DNA recombination, has increased public interest in biomedical research and molecular genetics. This, in turn, has launched an important debate about the potential social, political, and environmental problems from the development of these technologies. Simply put, it was possible to slow down a bit and ride progress when all participants sat down together and publicly agreed on common rules. Berg and Singer themselves assess it this way. Through candor, scientists avoided the imposition of restrictive legislation because a consensus was developed on how they should conduct their research. The conference showed that the right response to their scientific knowledge is to create guidelines and rules that define how to regulate it. The outcomes of the conference were named after the venue, the Asylum R Principles. They have since been considered the benchmark for successful collaboration between the scientific community, government, and the general public. But what does this have to do with AI? Well, the fact is that 42 years later, in 2017, the same Asylum R conference hall hosted a largely similar conference. It brought together more than 100 cutting-edge young industry leaders and scientists to discuss the possible dangers of a new, rapidly evolving technology that could change the world beyond recognition in the future. Only this time, it was artificial intelligence technology. The Beneficial AI 2017 conference was attended by representatives from Facebook, IBM, Apple, Google, and their AI lab, DeepMind, professors from Berkeley, Columbia, MIT, Stanford, Sam Altman, who represented OpenAI, along with his then business partner, Elon Musk. Here are some of the roundtable questions at the conference. What can happen with universal artificial intelligence and how to avoid these problems? Superintelligence, science or fiction. If a general human level AI is created, what are the likely outcomes? What can we do now to maximize the likelihood of a positive outcome? How can we increase prosperity through automation without leaving humans without income or meaning in life? The agenda sounds a little unsettling, doesn't it? Fortunately, there was also a separate fireside chat on the schedule for IT managers, just getting acquainted with customs of the local humanoids. What makes people happy? Compared to the results of the geneticist conference, this meeting went almost unnoticed, and the principles published as a result went nowhere. In 23 short paragraphs, they only outline the possible challenges to AI development. So why did the organizers of the conference in 2017, the NGO Future of Life, sound the alarm in 2023? Let's take a look at what's happened in the meantime. DNA research for biologists, medical corporations, and the agribusiness industry has been groundbreaking, but it didn't change the very nature of business processes. Plants continue to grow in the ground, pills continue to be prescribed by doctors, food continues to be sold in stores, and the public only needed to be convinced that reanimated GMOs probably don't exist and wouldn't eat their children in the night. The situation with AI was radically different. AI will definitely eat your children at night. 
No, I'm just kidding. The technology itself was being created in the lap of IT giants who had hammered their place in the market from zero to the top of the stock market indexes in what seemed like a couple of decades, and promised to once again turn the precarious balance of what had been established between these corporations upside down. The technology itself smiled carnivorously at its creators from the dawn of its development, promising to penetrate into every sphere related to data collection, processing, and interpretation. That is, firstly, it was practically all about spheres of human activity, and secondly, it was about data. What these corporations mainly make money on. And who else wants to know everything about everyone so that everyone is well off? That's right, our friends the government. Who else watched with interest and tried to participate in the race to acquire universal artificial intelligence, also known as Big Brother? The stakes had never been so prohibitively high, and holding hands together was no longer an option. A year after the Asylumar conference in 2018, Elon Musk left OpenAI, splitting with Sam Altman over the company's future. Musk has since criticized all of OpenAI's developments and consistently poached company employees to Tesla and X Corp projects, never ceasing to give interviews about the dangers of AI while stating his plans to have a new say in the field. Meanwhile, OpenAI gets multi-billion dollar infusions from Microsoft by 2019 and goes from non-profit to quite too profit. The pace of the race to train and expand the data on which the models learn continues to grow. Projects such as DeepMind and Bard of Alphabet are participating in the competition. Microsoft, in addition to OpenAI, is investing in the AI function of Bing. And there are rumors of developments by Apple, which is still mysteriously silent on the issue. The interest of states in such developments doesn't seem to weaken either. In 2018, London's Chatham House released a low-key report titled AI in International Affairs, Expected Shocks. It mentions Elon Musk's statement from 2017 that AI poses a far greater risk than North Korea and calls the main dangers of AI not a machine uprising, but mass disinformation campaigns and the undermining of liberal democracies, the very foundations of power structures and international politics. The recipe for preventing these risks is, of course, the development of strong working relationships, especially in the defense sector between public and private AI developers, and corporations, governments, and foundations should allocate funds for the development and deployment of AI systems. Translated bureaucratically, if you cooperate with us and no nonsense, we'll ensure widespread adoption of your technology. That same year, in 2018, the European Union created the High Commission on Artificial Intelligence, which began to formulate regulations with industry leaders. In 2019, the U.S. Congress creates the National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource Task Force. Whoa, what a mouthful. While every year in beautiful presentation booklets, it demands and receives more and more funding. As we saw, governments and corporations approach 2020 preparing for a leap in data processing and the developments of artificial intelligence models. Fortunately, nothing exciting happened in 2020 in the next few years, but the amount of digital data to process is somehow dramatically increasing, and people's mental health is more ready than ever to shake up the very foundations of the labor market in the interaction with information. And here we are again in 2023. Neural networks from closed development have become a publicly available tool, and sophisticated neuro-linguistic models are already being written about as showing glimpses of universal artificial intelligence. It is clear to all players that the next few years will be crucial for the industry, and tensions are building to a fever pitch. And here we go back to the letter from the Future of Life organization that brought all the key players together at the Sanctuary by the Sea six years ago to agree on the rules of the game. We call on all AI labs to immediately pause the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4 for at least six months. Such a pause must be public, verifiable, and involve all key participants. If such a pause cannot be imposed quickly, governments should step in and impose a moratorium. Knowing the background of the site, this no longer sounds like the concerns of some pro-peace organization, but rather an ultimatum from one key player to another. Rereading this appeal, another detail strikes the eye, which probably hides the real motives of the people who signed this letter and put it on the world agenda. It is about suspending the training of AI more powerful than GPT-4. More powerful than that? Why? It doesn't say anything about stopping the training of GPT-4 itself. So it's not GPT-4 that Future of Life thinks is the danger. But what is? 
other models more powerful and advanced about which the general public doesn't know anything? From this point, without access to the secrets of corporations and states, we can only speculate. There can be two answers, and which one is correct is up to you to decide. Answer one, there are already more powerful AI systems that were going to be released right after GPT-4. But having seen its capabilities after the release on March 14th, other industry representatives and government commissions got scared and demanded to urgently discuss the regulations of such systems. And if that fails, a moratorium on them before the situation gets out of hand. In this case, Elon Musk and the other signatories really saved humanity by not letting the genie out of the bottle. Answer two. To come to the second answer, we need to reconstruct the sequence of events around the spring of 2023 in the world of AI. So, on February 24th, 2023, on the eve of the public release of GPT-4, the testing of which was also public, Sam Altman voluntarily, on behalf of OpenAI, publishes a statement that we should think about security and regulation of AI. After that, ChatGPT-4 is released to the public on March 14th. And on March 22nd, an open letter about the suspension of AI research appears. But two other important dates in the chronology are worth mentioning. The day before the letter was published, on March 21st, Google opens early access to its AI, BARD. And on March 9th, 2023, Elon Musk filed documents for the registration of the company XAI, which is going to work with such famous experts in the field as Igor Babushkin and Manuel Kreuz, employees of DeepMind, the AI lab of Alphabet, the owner of Google, and many other stars of the industry. From this perspective, we see a very different picture. Two corporations, Microsoft and Google, are competing for a place in the new technological market. And up to this point, as it seemed to them, they were neck and neck. But the public test shows that ChatGPT had taken a big lead. Elon Musk, aware of the upcoming releases and realizing that now is the best time to announce his entry into the game, offers an alternative to the soulless corporations. His visionary work, and one more specific goal, to take advantage of the pause and conflict situation to pull engineers into his own project. By the way, the Future of Life organization that published the letter list Elon Musk as an external advisor. This theory is indirectly confirmed by one interesting graph, which we can find in the attachments to the open letter. Here it is. On it, we can see that ChatGPT4 overtakes all currently known models by the amount of computation spent on training. Its closest competitor, Minerva from DeepMind Labs by Google, is seven times behind. And despite the near panic rhetoric of the letter, the widespread press discussion of the perilous brink we have reached for humanity, the author's specific recommendations published in a separate annex to the letter seem to have much more down-to-earth goals. Here they are, briefly listed at the end of the document. Number one, introduce mandatory third-party auditing and certification. Number two, regulate access to computing power. Number three, establish capable AI agencies at the national level. Number four, establish liability for harm caused by AI. Five, introduce measures to prevent and track leaks of AI models. Number six, expand funding for technical research on AI safety. And number seven, develop standards for identifying and managing AI-generated content and recommendations. The recommendation to policymakers in the letter appendix and how such documents even come to light is worth a separate video. So if you're interested in learning more about the political legal side of the progress, give it a like and write about it in the comments. But in general terms, it's audits, regulations, legal norms, funding. No panic, just specifics. And from these specific recommendations, we can guess why the letter is signed by current, DeepMind, and future Musk with XAI competitors, OpenAI and Microsoft, to slow down and regulate the use of computing power by the upstart ChatGPT. Meanwhile, organizations like Future of Life get time to lobby for new national and cross-national agencies and commissions, each of which can demand increased public funding, which you can't get without a lot of hype. Other indirectly interested parties can also be identified. Jan Talon, an Estonian billionaire known for his involvement in the development of Skype, is one of the chairmen of the Future of Life board of directors. He was also an investor and director of DeepMind, and since 2018 he's been involved in the previously mentioned EU's top AI commission. And he's a sponsor of Chatham House in London, whose report we already mentioned today. And there he is, right there on the beach in Asylomar. It really is a small world in Silicon Valley. So what were the implications of the letter? Publicly, it's as if it never happened. 
Altman said they hadn't even thought of beginning on ChatGPT5. Others suspected possessing more power than ChatGPT4 didn't give themselves away in the slightest, up to a point. Right after Musk's July 14th announcement of Project XAI, Bloomberg published credible rumors on July 19th that Apple's Ajax language model, similar to ChatGPT, was entering the AI arms race. And that's just when studies about the weaknesses and limitations of the OpenAI product started to appear. For example, the gradual stunned responses of the model, and hence the shaken image of the unquestionable leader. And it's clear that the opponents have come to some kind of agreement behind closed doors after all. On May 30th, 2023, the Center for AI Safety, itself formed in 2022, issued a short statement. Avoiding the risk of extinction from artificial intelligence should be a global priority, alongside other societal risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. It was signed by many prominent figures in the AI field, including Sam Altman. That said, case director Dan Hendricks is an advisor to Elon Musk's AI team. This suggests that the regulatory dialogue continues between commissions and corporate representatives, but you certainly can't compare it to the openness of Salomar's principles. What conclusion could be drawn from all this then? The greatest danger in the rapid development of AI technologies is seen by technological mega corporations, which are afraid that competitors will get ahead and seize the first place from the emerging market. At the same time, the very nature of the new technology dictates the inevitability of state regulation of the sphere. This is understood by both leading and lagging players, for whom the main thing is not to lose sight of each other and not to allow new competitors into the pie. It is the same at the level of states. For example, Spare CEO German Greff warned of the danger of creating a closed club of world powers in the field of artificial intelligence at a meeting of the Federation Council in April 2023, noting that the US and China have put everything on the line in the race of AI supremacy. The open letter from the future of life and the buzz around it is one of the first high profile statements to the general public, a stone in the pond of public discussion. And while such storms will send out waves of informed and not so informed public discussion about AI, the big fish will be fighting in troubled waters for the pieces of the nascent technology market that will largely shape this century. For now, at its dawn, we're seeing the beginning of a real AI arms race, and no one is going to get out of it for the sake of world peace and the future of life. How close do you think we are to universal AI, and what will be the next breakthrough comparable to the public release of ChatGPT4? Will we be able to curb the dangerous sides of artificial intelligence as we once did the atom and make it serve for the benefit of humanity? Write in the comments and subscribe to the channel and don't miss new releases from the world of high tech.